What do you do if you want a Nodachi, but you're also a filthy gaijin who likes double-edged blades? That might be an option. This is from Swords of North Shore. On the website, it's called Japanese Samurai Nodachi Sephiroth Sword. I'm just gonna call it Nodachi. Even though some people have pointed out it seems a little short for Nodachi. Fair enough. It's definitely longer than Itachi. I would say that personally, I'd say it's probably something somewhere in between, in between, in between Itachi and a Nodachi. Or maybe it's just a shorter Nodachi. It's put together with their TX4 model blade, which is double-edged for more than half the blade. So you can see it starts here, and then it's sharpened on the false edge all throughout to the point. And it's got one central narrow fuller that goes all the way through, almost all the way, it ends here. And then you've got a second fuller as well, a wider one that runs up to about here. So that lightens some of the weight. The weight, by the way, on my scale is 1.34 kilograms. It came with this really neat uh, scroll of specs. It comes in this little tube here, pretty cool. That's the certificate. And on here it says 1.65 kilograms, but that must be with the scabbard. So just the sword itself is 1.34. There's a number of colors available for the wrap on the grip as well as on the scabbard, the scabbard color. You can pick the color of the ray skin wrap. There's a number of things you can do. Engraving as well, if you want. What I'd really appreciate is that this has a battle wrap, meaning that the Manuki is actually in between where you would grip it. It's not right there, so you don't have to contend with that. Having the fingers right on it, it's just right there, out of the way. I mean, unless you want to hold it this way, then you would be right on there, but you can easily grip it in such a way that you don't have to bother with it. And I also like the different pattern. You've got the knotted wrap here, and then it just, goes flat there, closer to the Manuki, flat again, and then you've, you've got it at the end. I'm assuming the, the intention is that you hold it like this. One hand here, the other all the way down. Personally, because I'm used to long swords, I actually prefer to grip it here, not with the hands not quite as far apart. So this gets rid of something that's always irked me about most katana grips on the market. And from what I've been told, this is a more recent thing. It's not actually a traditional wrap to, to have the Manuki on the left side where the fingers would be on it. Uh, from what I hear, traditionally it's on the other side, so where it's in your palm and, and it wouldn't really bother you as much. But here, it's just out of the way, completely. I much prefer that. This is way more comfortable. It's not irritating and it works very well. So for the blade, you have different choices. Personally, I went with 1095 high carbon mono steel. So no differential tempering, no harm on, anything like that. That's a sturdier option, basically. This is very unlikely to bend. If you have a softer spine and a hard edge, the blade is prone to bending if you strike hard targets. But there's pros and cons to each, and that's really nice. That's what I appreciate about Swords of North Shore. You have the option to customize it the way you want. If you want a different steel, you can pick that. If you want a different blade shape, you can do that. If you want a different wrap or different whatever, it's doable. The edge is hand sharpened and they did a really nice job. This is definitely appropriately sharp, you know, what you would expect really from a sword like this. And what I also appreciate is they put the same care into the false edge. This seems to be just as sharp as the main edge. So this allows me to defile the sword with my Western barbarian ways of using it, you know, false edge cuts and 
all that, and that's, that's what I do. It works. It works really well, in fact. I try a number of cuts. I had one day, you know, one of those days where you just know it's off. You just feel you're not really quite there, and it just didn't work terribly well. You can tell my edge alignment was off. However, you can tell a good sword by its ability to still cut even if you're not doing it with perfect form. It still cut through the tatami. It wasn't ideal by any means, but those were still decent cuts. And in the other cutting session that I had, it went a lot better. All right, let's see how it cuts. It's going to be the usual challenge for me of dealing with an extremely long handle, but I'll have to grip it all the way down here. I can grip it more like this. See how that goes. Oh. Oh yeah. Clean, smooth, effortless. There we go. Yes. Very nice. All right, this cuts beautifully. Now I'll space my hands further apart. See how that goes. Yep, no problem. Nice. See if I can do a rising fall touch cut. Okay. Oh, damn. This blade is very forgiving. I can see that I scalloped the cut on that one. Doesn't matter, went through it anyway. Really effortless cuts. You know what? Let me try, let me try single hand. No problem. Really good cutter. It's easy to feel the edge alignment because of the shape of the grip. The front and back is rounded, the sides are flat, and it's beveled for comfort, but not too much. It's exactly the kind of cross-section that you want to know really where your edge is. And you just keep control over it, and just, yeah, it, it shows in the cutting. I also did some harder tests, cutting some tree limbs and uh, chopping into some larger pieces. It did fine, it, nothing loosened up. Well, with one exception, I'll get to that later. But the Tsuba, the guard, didn't loosen up. There's no rattle. It still feels very solid. And there's overall no damage to the blade, with the exception of, I noticed one little spot where the edge is slightly deformed. Uh, not in any way that would affect the cutting noticeably. And you have to really look at it in the right light. It's just a little bit of a dent in it, but that's really minor. So no problem, there's no chipping or anything. Also really no significant scratching. Weight and balance are very appropriate for a sword this size. Uh, you could use it with one hand if you wanted to. It's just a bit too bulky for that. But in terms of weight, it's doable. And uh, yeah, it's a very quick sword. Nice thing also with the fuller, you have the sword wind when you perform a cut with good speed and edge alignment. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'll try. I think you can hear it in parts of the cutting footage. The fit overall seems very good with one exception. That's the cap at the end here. This is loosened up. Apparently all that's holding it in place is just a wrap. At least I'm not seeing any signs of glue. If they use glue, it wasn't enough or not the right or whatever. That's a bit of a bummer, especially since this is something that I associate with cheapo katanas. I was not expecting to see that on this, so that needs to be fixed. Here's a scabbard, which as I mentioned is customizable. I went for this dark red, which has a really nice kind of glittery metallic effect. It looks great in person. I'll try to show it as best as I can, but this looks very nice. 
And when I first got it, the fit was a little too tight, like to the point where if you insert it all the way, you have to really yank on it like a bison to get it up. That was a strange comparison. Anyway, but it is broken in. So now you can definitely do it more easily with or without using the thumb. It also came in the silk bag here. So overall, I'd say this is a well-made sword, especially for the price. Uh, on the website, it's listed currently for 440 US dollars. Uh, I don't know if some of the options may cost extra, like if you want a different blade or different material, but as a base price, for a reproduction sword of this quality, that's a really reasonable price. I definitely don't have any problem with that. Uh, overall, I don't have any complaints except the loose cap here. It's a powerful blade. You know, cutting through some of the thick limbs is pretty impressive and wasn't very difficult. So tatami cutting, beautiful, no problem. Uh, if you want to cut green bamboo and things like that, that, that would also work quite well with this. And uh, it looks good. It performs well. It's reasonably priced. What more do you want? So I can definitely recommend it. Uh, link will be in the description down below. I hope you found the review helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.